Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the preparatory ground instruction for exercise 23B, uh, I call it, in-flight navigation. So hopefully you've already gone through the ground school on how to do navigation. Uh, you've looked at the preparatory ground instruction for how to prepare a flight. And at this point in your flight training, uh, hopefully you've done, let's say, a recreational pilot permit flight test already, and you're ready to learn about how to navigate uh, the aircraft in flight from one point to another. So obviously uh, you want to know how to do this because, well, you, you don't want to just do circuits at your home airport all the time. You actually want to take your airplane somewhere. So let's uh, begin with discussing uh, set heading, uh, the set heading procedure. So if you recall from our last lesson and from your ground school, we pick a set heading point and that set heading point is an obvious landmark where the navigation formally begins. So you might depart one airport uh, but you know you're still in the circuit they might give you a vector uh, outside out to clear the zone to remain clear of traffic and you don't really want to start things and have your head down there so you're going to formally start your navigation at the set heading point as you approach the set heading point what you're going to do is do something called a departure angle check so you haven't quite reached a set heading point but you see it ahead of you let's just say it's a prominent intersection of highways and you're going to look to the left and you're look, going to look to the right and you're going to look at your map and you're going to pick landmarks both to the left of your track and to the right of your track. And you do this just to make sure that your heading is approximately correct. And so, for example, uh, sticking with our example of a of a road intersection, uh, you, you're reaching a prominent intersection and then you look on your map and you're like, OK, so I'm going to be splitting the difference between these two roads uh, on the way outbound. So I'm not following one road, um, but to the left, I see this one highway and to the right, I see this other highway. And that's that's how it goes. If you show up and both highways are to the right of you, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. I am like way off course. I need to, I, I screwed something up on my planning. I probably should turn around uh, before I go in the completely wrong direction. Uh, let's just say you forgot to add a one and instead of going 290, you figure you should be going 190. So th these kind of like big errors that are going to really get you in trouble. That's the point of this departure angle check. The other thing you're going to do, you're going to set your heading indicator, open your flight plan with ATC if you haven't already. And then uh, once you're over this head heading point, you're going to record the time and start navigating. You record your time on your en route log. So here's an example. Uh, we took off uh, Thunder Bay and our set heading points at Quebecca Falls, because it's an obvious uh, point. And we're going to Upper Shabanawan Lake. So we are now overhead Kekebeka Falls, and we're going to put in our uh, time up here. So there's actual time, and it took us 15 minutes to get there. We put in our magnetic heading, distance flown, and now we have an estimated uh, and a revised ETA. So we just we knew it was going to be 24 minutes uh, from our flight plan, and we are just adding on that to our, our current time. So let's talk about reading the map. This takes a bit of practice, and especially it takes a bit of practice if you fly in different parts of Canada. So reading, if you learn to fly in Southern Ontario, let's just say, uh, reading the map is a lot different than reading the map in, let's say, Northwestern Ontario, where there's a massive amount of lakes, okay? So it, th this is one of the reasons that, even though, I, I mean, I've flown a lot of, I've done a lot of flying, and I still have a map out when I fly VFR because it is a skill that deteriorates. Uh, it requires practice. And I, I like knowing exactly where I am and being good at reading reading maps. So uh, there's just a few tips on this map reading. Uh, when you're flying, you orient the chart in the direction of flight. That's kind of the, the number one thing. Turn it, fold it. And you want to anticipate your landmarks based on time and speed. So you're you're flying an airplane. You're like, okay, so the next thing I should see is, let's just say, oh, I, I'm going to expect to see a tower on the right, and then I'm going to see this lake, and I'm kind of anticipating that I'm going to see this in a in a few minutes. Uh, generally speaking, you look at prominent landmarks um, outside, and then you find them on the map to figure out where you are. You don't want to do the reverse necessarily, where you look at the map and then try to find the landmarks outside. You can do that, but it's kind of a recipe for getting lost because you tend to um, yeah, just 
screw things up anyway, kind of backwards. Uh, the next one's really important. You want to positively identify landmarks on the map. And this can really throw you for a loop is that let's say you're flying in northern Ontario. And there's a lot of little lakes. It's really easy to get lost. And sometimes you say, OK, this is how this lake looks like. And then you don't want to tell yourself you're lost. So you look at your map. And then you kind of convince yourself, oh, yeah, yeah, this is this lake, even though the lake doesn't remotely look like that, the lake on the outside. And so it's pretty rare that happens. So if that happens to you, uh, you might want to just more positively identify that landmark. What you can do is you can pinpoint locations and mark the map with on a time. So as you're flying and you are uh, sure where you are, you're just going to make a little pinpoint with your with your pencil and then put the time there and then you'll see like a bunch of breadcrumbs it's kind of like Hansel and Gretel and uh I think that's that's what it is Hansel and Gretel I think that's the story anyway um and you just kind of mark where you're where you're going and, and where you the, and and so if you get lost you know where your last position was that you knew for sure that you that you were and then because we're VFR we're looking outside uh, if the weather's good you just take a look outside find a landmark in the distance that's along your track and just fly to it uh, visually. Let's discuss this in-flight log that you're going to keep. And so you can see in the top right corner uh, in the actual log that I have on freepilotgroundschool.ca, it's it's in the bottom left corner, but here that's just how I had to make it. Uh, you have an in-flight log. And so we took off and we've marked over uh, Kekbeka Falls, KG8, uh, our time. And so when we hit our checkpoint, what we want to do is we want to record our time. We use the flight computer to calculate the ground speed and time remaining based on the pre-calculated distance traveled and distance to go. So let's take a look at this. Here we are. Uh, we are over this first checkpoint. You can see the airplane here. And we're going to re record our time. So we recorded our time right here. It's now 1224. It took us nine minutes, so nine minutes from our set heading point, Kakabeka Falls. Our heading is 293. We, on the ground, already figured out that we'd fly 13 miles. And so using our flight computer, and this is kind of tricky because you have to fly the airplane and use your flight computer at the same time. You're going to have a ground speed of 87. Now, don't once you have your ground speed, don't move your flight computer anymore. It doesn't need to be turned anywhere. You just need to look on the outer ring and look at for the number 26 right here, and then look down, and it's going to show you that you have 17 minutes. Okay. And now here's another trick. Once your flight computer is set like this, don't don't move it anymore. Just leave it. Because at your next checkpoint, most likely your ground speed will be about the same. And so you might only have to move it just a wee little bit just to adjust it, but you're not spinning trying to think about everything. So if you find yourself constantly spinning your, your flight computer after your first one, it's probably uh, a hint that you've kind of screwed something up because it, it shouldn't change that much. And so here we are at a second checkpoint. We're doing the same uh, thing. Uh, we're going to write down our time over what I call this Shabandawan Road, 1233. It took us 18 minutes from a set heading point. So, so I, I always do this from the actual set heading point, not from the last checkpoint, because we just want to average everything out. And then the farther we fly, uh, the more averaged everything gets uh, put out. We flew 26 miles, distance to go, and then you hear revised ETA. So you can tell the ETA's pretty much stayed within a minute. So let's uh, talk about being off course and, and some methods of getting back on course. The first one, a super easy visual alteration. Uh, we're looking at our map and we say, oh, we're a bit off course. And then we just look at a landmark that's on course and we just fly to uh, that landmark. It's that easy. If we want to determine how many miles off course we are, that's why we did our 10 degree drift line. So here we can estimate pretty easy. Uh, here we are approximately, well, 10 degrees off course on our, our drift line, 9 to 10 degrees. And here we are, and we're going to head back to a uh, landmark. If we want to determine drift uh, once airborne, we have our 10 degree drift lines. So we can measure both the to and from the set heading point and destination to figure out uh, how much 
drift we have from our destination and, and what we need to to get back. So here's just an example here. We're slightly off course. So let's estimate uh, what, uh, how much drift we have. So let's just say four degrees, I would say, from our, from our, uh, from our destination. We're about four degrees off course, or not from our destination, our set heading point. So using this drift, uh, we can use a couple of methods in order to get back on course other than the visual alteration. So the first one we're going to talk about is the double track error method. And this method is used when you're correcting er heading errors that are due to wind. So you were blown off course. It's not going to help you if you're just sloppy with your heading control and, and you don't know, you just can't fly the airplane, you're kind of all over the place. So this is when you planned your flight, but the wind's different than what you planned for. And this is why you're off course. And it is also uh, only works prior to your halfway point. And this is why you put a halfway point on your map. So what you do is you're going to calculate your error in degrees, your drift, and then you're going to turn double that amount to uh, back towards the track that you're intending to fly. So if you're four degrees off course, you're going to turn eight degrees to your track. Then you're going to fly that amount of time. So let's say you've flown 10 minutes. You're going to fly another 10 minutes, eight degrees. And at that time, you're going to take half the correction out. So now you're just going to turn in four degrees. So this makes sense. If the wind blew you off four degrees, you're now back on course and you're going to be flying four degrees more into uh, the wind. So here's an example. We're flying and we find ourselves, let's say, six degrees off course. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn 12 degrees towards the track. We're going to fly for the same amount of time until we're back on course. So let's say we flew 10 minutes and uh, we're going to fly another 10 minutes, crabbed in 12 degrees. And then at that point, we can take half of our uh, crab out. So now we're, we're back to only uh, six degrees in. And then we can do that for the rest of the flight. The second method that we're going to talk about is the opening and closing angle. So this is used to correct errors uh, track errors that occur after the halfway point. So this is why we have those 10 degree drift lines. We can estimate what our opening angle is, so our, our off course from our departure end, and the closing angle from the destination. And so the way to do this is you just add these two angles together and fly for the rest of the flight with these two things, uh, with these two angles added together. So let's just say here we are, we're after our halfway point. So our opening angle here, I would say about eight degrees, I think you'd probably say eight degrees. And our closing angle uh, is probably like seven degrees. So we add those two together, 15 degrees. So we're going to turn 15 degrees uh, towards our track and then fly and hopefully by the rest of the flight will arrive at our destination. So this is really important to know if you're flying in an area that doesn't have a lot of landmarks and then you, you, you don't see much and then all of a sudden you're at one landmark and you can identify that landmark you're off this far and, and you can't use the visual alteration method let's talk about some lost procedures uh, first off don't panic uh, just settle down you're going to find your way back uh, on course so don't panic you're going to draw a circle uh, on your map where you were at your last known point so this is why it's a good idea to do those pinpoints or breadcrumbs as you're flying you're just going to drop put them on there so you have an idea you know what time you were and then you know how fast you fly so you can you can get an idea of where you where you are so then then go to a prominent landmark on the ground and go to that landmark and then look for it on the map and this should be somewhere in that circle uh where around your last known point so you have your last known point you know what time that was and now you look at the time how far you would have flown so you're you're going to you're going to be able to figure out pretty easily uh, where if you draw a circle the area that you will be in and now you're over a landmark and you can find that landmark on the map it's going to be within that circle if that doesn't work what you can do is you can ask for a, a VHF DF steer or direction finding steer so you uh, you would call air traffic control on a VHF frequency you can call like 126.7 or 121.5 uh, the emergency frequency 
just explain the situation that you're lost and they'll probably ask you to hold your microphone down count to five or something like that and then they'll tell you fly this heading to get to whatever airport you are and uh one kind of one last thing what you can do is fly a triangle pattern with one minute 30 second legs to be honest with you i'm I'm not sure, this is in the book, but I have no idea what this would accomplish. Hopefully they'd see you on radar. But if you're in an area that has radar, uh, then most likely you're in an area that also has VHF um, radio contact with air traffic control and you could get a hold of them and get a DF steer. Um, so I don't know, and you're probably gonna run out of gas flying this triangular pattern anyway. So I'm not sure what, what in the world they would do, but. I don't know. What do I know? Anyway, uh, that's what you do if if you end up uh, getting lost. But the the key thing is is don't get lost in the first place. Just uh, do your navigation, have your map out, fly properly. Let's discuss the flight test standards. Uh, there are uh, a couple of items. There's going to be a departure briefing uh, mark you get and an en route procedure mark. So you want to make sure you note your takeoff time and uh, and mark your time over your your set heading point. You have to comply with ATC. Big thing, set your heading indicator and, uh, and and just make sure that the heading indicator is set so you don't end up off course. Then when you're uh, en route, uh, you're going to be expected to uh, continue to do everything that you normally would do. You're going to set your power, lean mixture, that sort of thing. Uh, you're at your cruise altitudes. You're expected to maintain your cruise altitudes within 200 feet and 10 degrees uh, for your private license. You should be able to hold it within 100 feet. It's not it's not that difficult to do. And uh, you are expected to navigate using systematic navigation techniques. Uh, so uh, whatever that means is just, I think that's kind of what we covered uh, earlier as opposed to, I guess, track crawling, which I've never really heard of. Um, which I guess means just going, just just pilotage. So yeah, expected to fly the the heading. You're gonna keep your nav log, give your examiner your estimated time on route, and uh, the the one thing is the examiner is not gonna make you do this whole route. You're just gonna go to your first checkpoint where you're going to give a revised estimated uh, time of arrival. Anyway, that concludes this lesson on in-flight navigation. Uh, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in our next lesson.